My lord, Clement Weather. Draft here. Lovegrove begs me to inform your lordship that the Phalaenopsis Lord of Maniana in the South Conservatory is in full bloom. Eh? An orchid. Oh. Anything in the paper? The suffragettes are again giving trouble, my lord. One of them threw a brick bat through a window at number 10 last evening. Oh. Well, go on. Are there any casualties? An underfootman sustained a broken nose. No one of any consequence was hurt. The Prime Minister was dining out. Oh, it's a pity. Well, what do you mean, no one of any consequence? How do you know that the underfootman wasn't just as good a fellow as the Prime Minister? My, my Lord, I beg you to lower your voice, if any of the other servants should hear you. Now, we've had this discussion before, Crichton. Today, I intend to prove my point. Oh, no, my Lord. Yes, Crichton, get my daughters out of bed immediately. I beg your pardon. What? Oh, I see. Well, well uh, get, get their maids to get them out of bed. Breakfast will be in 30 minutes, and I expect all three of them to be there. Very good, my Lord. I'll send Rolleston in to dress you. Liberty, equality, fraternity. All for one and one for all, Crichton. That was the French, my lord. Good morning, Crichton. Good morning, my lady. His lordship is waiting. Thank you, Crichton. Good morning, Crichton. Good morning, Lady Catherine. His lordship is waiting. You do him good. Morning, Crichton. His lordship is waiting, Lady Agatha. Oh, golly. Morning, Father. Morning. Father, why have we been dragged out of bed at this unearthly hour? Unearthly? My dear girl, are you aware that millions of good people in the British Isles have already been hard at work for three hours and more? People, yes, but not us. And thousands of them have started their day on no more than a crust of bread and a cup of water. You seem very interested this morning, Father, in the way other people live. I am. And so ought you to be. All of you. Father, please. Not at breakfast. That maid of yours, Mary. What's her name? Fisher? Yes, Fisher. What's her Christian name? Oh, I don't know. And what's more, I'm sure she doesn't want me to. Father, dear, you'll be asking us next to share our meals with our maids. That's exactly what you are going to do. Father, what can you mean? Well, I mean this. At four o'clock this afternoon, you will all be in the drawing room. There, we shall entertain the staff to tea, the entire staff. You will treat them all as your equals. I, for one, refuse to have any part of it. Have you forgotten, Father, that George is coming to tea? Mary, I order you to be present. All I can say, Father, is if my life has to be ruined, I should have preferred to have done it myself. Well, I can't be there. Ernest Woolley is taking me to London in his new motor car. At four o'clock, Catherine. But Father, how can we? I said four o'clock. Father, I was... <laughs> well, they'll get used to the idea. I sincerely hope not, my lord. Uh, none of that now. Surely you don't object to meeting me as man to man? Haven't I always treated you as a human being? Most certainly not, my lord. Your treatment to me has always been as it should be. Well, that's enough. This afternoon at four o'clock, you will be my equal. I'll soon show you whether you're my equal or not. Oh, my dear. You do as you're told. Very well, my lord. The entire outdoor staff will also be present, but I shall speak to them later. The order of entry will be posted on the notice board outside my sitting room after luncheon. That is all. Now, have we any questions? We aren't going to be asked to sit down, are we, Mr. Crichton? You most certainly are, Mabel. 
and not, you will remember, on the edge of the chair. You will all seat yourselves firmly in the center of it. Oh, I shall die, I know I shall. You will do no such thing, Eliza. Not at any rate until you have left the room. <laughs> It'll be a bit of a lark, I reckon. We'll have a real good blowout. All friends together, eh, Crichton? Did I hear you call me Crichton? Yes, sir. In 10 to 15 years' time, you might have reached a position in which you could address me as Mr. Crichton. Never in any circumstances whatsoever would you be entitled to call me Crichton. There's a train at 12.30. Pack your bags. Right, about your duties. And remember, no gossiping above stairs. I apologize for that boy's behavior, Mr. Crichton. You look pale, Mrs. Perkins. Do you wonder? Small glass of port, perhaps? Oh, thank you. Oh, Ernest, isn't it exciting? It's better than your father's tea party, what? Oh, only we weren't just looking on. What? Well, oh, steady on, old girl. Oh, no, they mustn't. Captain! Hey, Captain! Mrs. Perkins. Ah, Mrs. Perkins. Delighted. Mary? This is our dear Mrs. Perkins. How do you do? Pleased, I'm sure. Brocklehurst, our valued Mrs. Perkins. Monsieur Fleury. Oh, forgive me. Won't you sit down? My dear fellow, I'm charmed to see you. I'll bring you some tea. Uh, come along now. I want to hear all about your puddings. Thank you very much. Mr. Rolleston. Hmm? Oh, Traherne, come and look after Mr. Rolleston. And who is Mr. Rolleston? Father's valley. How do you do, Mr. Rolleston? Yes, this is an uh, unexpected pleasure. This sort of thing is utterly opposed to all my principles. It's the same for all of us, Brocky. And please don't call me Brocky. You Thomas know I detest it. <laughs> Brocky, dear, if you're going to marry Mary... My you engagement might. to Mary has yet to be announced. Miss Fisher. By Jove. I'm charmed to see you, Miss oh, Fisher. Please come and sit down, won't you? Now, tell me, what do you do? Uh, in the house, I mean. Ah, oh, Mary. Mr. Lovegrove. Tea for two. Ah, oh, Lovegrove. <laughs> How are all your family? Ah, say to you, my lord. <laughs> and how's your wife? Blooming? Blooming? First thing this morning. Opened out a fair treat, she did. Eh? Bright purple, with deep yellow spots she is. Good lord. Of course, she won't last. No, she'll be dead by Monday. That's the trouble with orchids, my lord. They won't last. Orchids? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> Come and have some tea. Jane Gladys Rose. Mary, take the girls a cup of tea. Father. Mary. Tea, Crichton? No, no. Allow me, my lady. This must be all most distasteful to you, Crichton. I'm ashamed to be seen speaking to you, my lady. Now, now, Crichton. None of that. We're all on equal terms today, you know. Now, is everyone here? All but the odds and ends, my lord. I want everybody. Not the tweenie. Everybody. Very well, my lord. Eliza. Keep still, girl. Uh, I'm so happy to see you. Eliza, my lord. Eliza. <laughs> my daughter, Mary. Now, now, come along and meet the others. I think I'll be all right here, thank you, my lord. You must do as you're told, Eliza. Oh, come along now. Mary, you're neglecting your guests. <laughs> Have you been to the opera lately? Uh, uh. Well, uh... What sort of weather have you been having in the kitchen? Oh, uh, well, um, 
For heaven's sake, woman, be articulate. Uh, forgive me, my lord. Lady Mary wishes to speak with you. Eh? Oh, uh, thank you, Crichton. Come, Eliza. Oh, Sir Crichton, I think you're wonderful. You won't leave me, will you? No, I won't leave you. Have a crumpet. Enjoy yourself. Oh, it's too much. It didn't seem too much when you were entertaining Fisher. Oh, I say, Mary, old girl, that's not fair. At any rate, thank heavens, Mother hasn't arrived yet. Your thanks are rather premature, George. What? Henry! My dear Emily, what has happened to your staff? Your front door was opened to me by a stable boy. <laughs> nice lad. Uh, now you're just in time to meet some of my friends. Uh, now, let me see. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, you remember Thomas, Emily? Charmed. Monte Carlo, was it? No. Fenway Hall. Oh, poor little Cynthia's coming out, Paul. That was before I came to his lordship. His lordship? Of course, I was only the underfootman then. An underfootman? You see, she'll never allow our engagement now. Oh, this is frightful. This is Loam Hall. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, this is Crichton speaking. Who is it, Crichton? It's Mr. Woolley, my lady. All right, Crichton, I'll speak to him. Very well, Ernest? Well, where's Catherine? Where? Ernest, have you been drinking? Father, he says Catherine's been arrested. Arrested? Well, now, now, what? What? Great Scott. Good heavens, I, I don't believe it. Yes, yes, of course. Goodbye. A suffragette. My daughter, arrested as a suffragette. That's what comes of all this darned equality. <laughs> a madhouse, Henry. You hobnob with servants. You introduce me to a footman. Is it any wonder that your daughter lands in jail? George. Come in. My lord. I noticed you were still awake, so I took the liberty of bringing you a cup of hot chocolate. Oh, thank you, Crichton. Very considerate of you. Oh. <clears throat> With respect, my lord, I have been giving a great deal of thought to your lordship's predicament. Well? Might I suggest that in six months' time, this unfortunate occurrence will have been forgotten? Well, what about it? It'll be six months of misery. If you are still here, my lord. You mean run away? I had thought uh, a breath of sea air, perhaps? Oh, yes, the yacht. Steam yacht. <laughs> My dear Crichton, you're a genius. Mediterranean, eh? Somewhat crowded at this time of the year, my lord. Oh, all right. Well, the West Indies? A little further, perhaps? South Seas? A happy choice. And might I suggest further, my lord, that the two young gentlemen be asked to accompany you? Young Woolley, you mean, and that parson fellow? Indeed, my lord. What about Brocklehurst? Well, I hardly think that Lady Brocklehurst will allow... No, 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 she won't, will she? <laughs> Splendid. Uh, how about staff? Damned incompetent last trip. Now, uh, if you would consider coming yourself this time... Uh... Well, under the circumstances... Thank you, Crichton. Thank you. And Crichton. My lord. Are you a good sailor? I'm a firm believer in the triumph of mind over matter. What's the ship's head? Due north, sir. Steady on that course. Inclement weather, my lord. A cup of tea. Oh, bring me a bowl. 
bowl of what, my lord? Just a bowl, a large bowl. Be good. You try it then. You tell that idiotic skipper to stop rocking the boat, or I'll give him his notice. Ice cold, of course. I trust you will find it so, sir. Mm. Nectar. Thank you, sir. It'll be hotter tomorrow. We're very near the equator, aren't we, Crichton? Some 20 degrees north of it, my lord. Oh? Our present latitude coincides with that of the Hawaiian Islands, which lies some 400 miles to the eastward. Oh. Thank you, Crichton. Isn't he wonderful, Ernest? He knows everything. Except how to keep cool, eh, Crichton? Why not design yourself a tropical outfit, Crichton? Something with an open neck and short sleeves, eh? And a tweenie, too. A, a few bees in a grass skirt would be rather fetching, what? <laughs> Indeed, yes, sir. <laughs> Very amusing. Oh, really, Ernest. Do you find it amusing, Crichton? No, my lady. Then why did you say so? Mr. Woolley is the second son of a peer. A cooling drink, my lady. Thank you. Crichton. What sort of a man are you? A sort of a man? Are you ambitious? Ambitious for what? To better yourself. My lady, I am the son of a butler and a lady's maid. The happiest of all combinations. To me, the most beautiful thing in the world is the haughty, aristocratic English home with everyone kept in his place. That's not how my father would have it. Indeed, he would not, my lady. He would have equality for all. But what good would that do? Any satisfaction I might derive from being your equal would be ruined by the footman being equal to me. Yes, I see. Wouldn't work, would it? In no circumstances, my lady. In no circumstances, whatever. No. Well, thank you, Crichton. Thank you, my lady. Very well, this deck is out of bounds. Sorry, sir. Ain't the moonlight lovely? Isn't, Eliza? Isn't. Isn't. Beads in a grass skirt. Hey? <laughs> Have you ever been kissed, Eliza? Kissed? Oh, no, Mr. Grant, I haven't. The first kiss is of paramount importance. It should be the correct mixture of delicacy and passion. Yes, Mr. Crichton. Designed neither to overexcite nor repel. Yes, Mr. Crichton. Oh, Mr. Crichton. Passengers below. See that all secure on deck. Aye, sir. His lordship's compliments, Captain. Yes, yes, I know, but I can't. This is a ship, not a flaming country mansion. And in a storm, it rocks about. Quite so, sir. If it'll cheer them up, you can tell them we're running before the wind and 200 miles off course. Very good, Captain. We shall, I take it, weather the storm? There's no reason why we shouldn't, unless the engines blow up. Like that, you mean? Like that. Captain's orders! All passengers to both stations! This is a 
fine time of night to be shipwrecked. Hurry, my lord. There's a distinct fist to port. Well, where's Wollaston? I refuse to leave this ship without my shoes. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Abandon ship. Take to the boats. Now, there's no need to panic, Crichton. Don't panic. <laughs> during the night, my lord, if indeed we are not the sole survivors. Well, it's a lovely afternoon anyway. Crichton, who is this person? Her name is Eliza, my lady. And what is her position in the household? On the twin of your ladyship. The what? A between maid, my lady. That is to say, she is not, strictly speaking at the moment, anything. Are we to understand you two are keeping company? Oh, my lady, a butler don't keep company. Indeed. Let us say, I have cast a favorable eye upon her. Land! Eh, hey, what? Look! If you please, Mrs. Johnson. Is it land, Crichton? Undoubtedly, my lord. Well, how long before we reach it? We should be ashore before long. Ashore? But we can't go ashore like this. How can we possibly meet the governor in our condition? My hair's a sight. Well, what are we to wear? Are we to stay in government house without a maid between us? If I might suggest, my lady, as a temporary expedient. What? Oh, Mr. Crichton, I couldn't. Her manners, as you may have observed, are deplorable. But she has a homely appearance and a heart of gold. Possibly. But I'm afraid she will not do. Quite impossible. Quite. Well, what do you see? Palm trees, my lord. White sands and palm trees. I say, how do we get out? May I suggest, sir, that the gentleman carry the ladies? Huh? 
Oh, yes, of course. That's a splendid idea. Ernest? Well, don't rush it, old chap. I say, it's beautifully warm. Lovely spot for bathing, isn't it? Right, old Cathy, old girl. Come to Daddy. Come on, then. There we go. Come, Agatha. Crichton. My lady? I beg your pardon, my lady. Coming for a paddle, sir. Is it stony? No, I don't think so, sir. Well, thank heaven for that. Come, Eliza. Well, Mr. Crichton, I can get out by myself. Come along. where we are. Crichton! My lord! Locate the nearest town or village, find some transport, and bring it back with him. Very good, my lord. May I mention the boat? Eh? Yes, yes. I'll see to that. Now then, you two, bring her in and tie her up to something. All right, sir. Now then, Crichton, get along with you. Here, this one will do. Have you got enough string? There we are. Splendid. Rather good. <laughs> to be our maid, you may as well make yourself useful. Are your hands clean? Very well. You may comb my hair. Well, I'll do my best, your ladyship. Tied it to a turtle. Of all the oh, dance... Oh, I say, sir, don't go on about it. Do you realize it may be hours before we're picked up? Well, not hours, sir, sure. We may even have to stay here all night. All night? Tied it to a turtle. Uh, ne never mind about the boat. Did you find the town? No, my lord. Uh, there is no town. Well, don't be absurd, Crichton. We're on an island, an uninhabited island. You mean there's no one here at all? There are birds, animals, possibly reptiles. But that is all. We are alone. Well, what are we going to do? We can't just stay here. It'll be dark soon. John. Crichton. What a... a what Father, you... you are the head of the family. You must give the orders. Orders, my dear? If we've got to stay here, something must be arranged about food and sleeping accommodation. Yes, 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 all right. Uh, now, let's get into the shade, and then we must find some food. There must be some berries or something. Come on. Go along, Eliza. Go along. Are you quite sure there's nobody else on the island? Quite sure, my lady. How long do you think it will be before we're rescued? We were driven far off our course, many miles from the regular shipping routes. I see. Thank you. 
my lady. Don't give up. How dare you, Crichton? The darn thing won't catch. Who told you about this, Woolly? I read it somewhere. It takes time, you know. The sun will be down in another hour. Phew, this is exhausting. Sure, it can be done, old man. Oh, yes, it's the friction that does it. Well, that's what the book says. Well, I'd like to meet the author. It'll be dark soon, and we must have a fire. Do you suppose there are snakes? Oh, don't. Waste of time. Will you allow me, please, gentlemen? Would you mind clearing the sun, please, sir? Dry grass, Eliza. Your spectacles, my lord. There you are, I told you. Simple. Yes, sir. When you know how. Shall I prepare the sleeping quarters now, my lord? Yes, yes, if you will. Thank you, Clayton. It's a lovely bed. I think you're wonderful, Mr. Crichton. You're a good little soul, Eliza. I'm not half hungry, sir. Not half? Oh, Lord, I'm at it again. <laughs> it's all right. No, it's no good. I'm just a common bit of rubbish. I use all the wrong words, don't I? I try not to. Especially when you're around. I shouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Trouble is, I like them. I gloat over them when I'm by myself. Blimey, I says, and cool, lovey. <laughs> and not half. Do you know what? All the time we was getting wet, I was praying to myself. Oh, Lord, let it be an island what it's natural to be vulgar on. That's the sort I am, sir. Uh, I'd best give me up if I was you. I won't give you up, Eliza. We'll fight your vulgarity together. Cool. There ain't never been no one like you ever. Yes, well, you better lie down and get some sleep. Mr. Crichton, it is safe here, ain't it? We won't all get eaten alive in our beds, will we? <laughs> Don't you worry, Eliza. I'll be keeping watch. Clement weather, my lord. What's that? Uh, coconut. Revolting. Uh, windfall, I'm afraid, my lord. Later on, we may hope for fresher fruit. Nothing to drink? I have located a freshwater spring some distance along the beach. Oh, where's the... Um... Uh, follow me, my lord. Right way. It's so positive, my dear chap. I can see all sorts of fish. Look! Annie! John! Ah! Ah! It's no 
use to darn things too tight. I'm very sorry, my lord. I have a small foot. Oh. Well, this is a pretty kettle of fish, Crichton. We can survive, my lord. You think so? Others have, with courage and good leadership. Without adequate food or shelter? We shall have both before long. Well, I don't see how you're going to manage it. I'm not the only man in the party. Well, how do you think I'm going to get Traherne and Woolley to work? If I might suggest it, my lord. Yeah. No work, no dinner. And what about ice Crichton? Are my sisters and I included in your curious rules? Not my rules, my lady. Fate makes its own rules. So the perfect servant at home now considers that we're all equal? Most certainly not, my lady. I have always maintained that in all circumstances, there must be one to command and others to obey. No work, no dinner, eh? Well, it's worth trying. What good is it without matches? By the time we get it going, the ship would be out of sight. If the ship ever comes, that fella Crichton, he's getting too big for his boots. I wish he were, then I could have him. It's a ship. John, it's a ship. It's a ship, we're sailing. It's coming in. It's like the beacon. Well, tell the others. Well, not that way, this way. That's all it's all. The lunatic, call that navigation, or I'll have him in jail. Is that a skipper, isn't it, Ball? There's nobody aboard. What? Well, we abandoned her. She's going down. Oh, I can't look. Our last hope gone. We'd better get back to the camp. Crichton, have you gone mad? Go and make yourself decent at once. I beg your pardon, my lord. But I must get out of the wreck before she sinks any further. Can anyone else swim? Good Lord, no. Not a stroke. I can, a little. I might be able to get there. Well, we won't risk it this time, my lady. Dear Mr. Crichton, you be careful! What? What an extraordinary fellow he is. I wouldn't mind wagering you'll get there. Go on, Mr. Crichton, you can do it! <laughs> Danny looked lovely. Oh, Danny. Seems to be holding well, my lord. We should salvage a great deal. Uh, congratulations, my dear fellow. A splendid effort. You uh, didn't find my cigars by any chance? I didn't look for them. Gentlemen, would you mind giving me a hand, please? I want to get out to her again before the tide rises. Right. My lady? I suppose you didn't bring us any clothes? No. But needles and thread, you'll find them useful. Your slippers, I believe, Eliza. Oh, thank you, Mr. Crichton. Would you mind lending a helping hand, my lord? Crichton, wait. Father, axes and lanterns are all very well, but I insist upon Crichton bringing us some reasonable clothing. Here, here. I do see why they shouldn't have some sheets and pillowcases for our beds. Table linen, too. Yeah. Mm. And what about our dinner service, eh? Well, uh, Father, you're in charge here. Well, my lord. Well, uh, do as they say and get what you can. Very good. Well, what 
What's that meant to be? Coconut, my lord. But we had coconut for lunch, damn it. And for breakfast. But this is diced. At luncheon, you will remember, it was shredded. But you must have found some food on the yacht, Crichton. I brought back what I was instructed to, sir. Crichton, you forget yourself. Do I, my lady? What's this? Are you questioning my orders, Crichton? My lord, we're not in England now. We're on a desolate island, hundreds of miles from anywhere. And if we're not very careful, we're all going to die on it. Well, that's no concern of yours. From now on, I shall give the orders, and you will obey them. With the deepest respect, my lord, no. What did you say? I said no, my lord. Oh, did you? Well, you can take a month's wages in your notice, and don't come to me for a reference. My lady, you cannot manage on your own. None of you can. You flatter yourself, Crichton. That's all. You can go. Very well, my lord. If he goes, I'm going too. Don't be stupid, girl. I mean it. You must stay here, Eliza. What, with this lot? Not blooming likely. If she goes, who's going? Agatha. Well, what are you waiting for? Your pardon, my lady. I suppose we'd better get on with dinner. Mr. smell something. So can I. Cooking. By heaven. It's roast pork. It's coming from over there. It's coming from the bay. Come on. It's coming from over there. Delicious. Pork chops. They've got pork chops. And onions. Oh, I can't bear it. I'm going down. Father, if you do, I'll never speak to you again. But Mary, pork chops. Won't you come down? And admit that you won? I'd rather die first. One pork chop between two. Yes, Mr. Crichton.
Keep swimming, my lady. You're doing splendidly. No, I can't. I can't. Yes, you can. Go on now. Oh, Christ, you... You be... Up, lady. Tempo. Not it, my lady. Not much further. Gently does it. I'll never forgive you for this. Never. Don't talk. Slip. Keep it in up. That's better. There you are. You never know what you can do till you try. Here you are, my lady. Drink this. This will warm you up. <coughs> oh, I, I might have drowned. And you'd have left me. Would I? I wonder. What did you come out here for, anyway? Oh, does it matter? Well, I'm just curious. It's a long way for scented soap and silk stockings. I wanted some food and... Something warm to wear and a, a pair of shoes. No shoes, I'm afraid. Your cabin's underwater. You did try, then? Well, of course I did. Thank you. It's all right, my lady. You're learning quickly. I'll try and find you something else. My friends, it is now nearly two years since we received the woeful news that the good ship Bluebell had uh, encountered disaster, followed by the tragic tidings concerning Lord Loam, his family, and others. We give thanks that the gallant captain and his crew and all his other passengers were so providentially, though tardily, rescued. We are further honored today by the presence amongst us of a great lady. The Countess of Brocklehurst was the first to contribute to the Loam Memorial Fund. Indeed, so generously that I'm happy to tell you there was quite a little piece left over for the organ fund. Well, as you all know, there were plans afoot for Lord Loam's eldest girl to have married my son. Now she's at the bottom of the sea. And he, he is broken-hearted. <coughs> uh, absolutely. So in memory to Lord Loam and his three daughters, the two young men, and Crichton the butler. And the Tweety. Oh, very well. And another young person. I now declare this bazaar. I now unveil this memorial. Governor. Clement weather. Good. Thanks, Daddy. <clears throat> I shall be interested to hear what you think about that. What is it? I like that. That's good. <laughs> Thanks, Governor. It's that new seaweed you found. It gives it a tang. That's it. Well, Daddy, how are you feeling today? Any complaints? 
I walked across just now and stood on the spot where we landed. Two years ago today. <laughs> My goodness. You've worked miracles, Gov. That includes giving you a waistline, eh? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm afraid I've wakened you a bit earlier this morning, Gov. You ready for your bath? Yes, right away. Oh, I've, um, I've put a new shell in your razor. Good, thank you. Lawrence Robertson, kitchener, generals Buller and White, all dressed up in their khaki, all ready to fight. <laughs> Ah. With our love. Bless your heart. From the top orchard? Mm -hmm. Should be a good crop this year. I'm not surprised all the work you put in. How's the barley coming along? We should harvest it next week. Good. I'm planning the new work schedule today. I say, Agatha, that's a smart outfit you've got on. Like it? Mmm, delightful. I designed it myself. A bit on the short side there, isn't it? You'll be giving the men ideas. <laughs> think so? <laughs> I think you both look charming. In fact, if I had to choose. Breakfast won't be long, Gov. Thanks, Daddy. Right, girl. Back to work. Oh, oh, God. Mary's late. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I'll put these in water. Thank you. Tweedy, how's that for the governor's lunch? They'll do. Don't you dirty my floor now. Daddy's just swept it. All right, if I dirty it, I'll sweep it again. Mm, I'd like to see you. Oh, now don't be beastly to me. You know I adore you. Oh, only shut up. Tweeny. I've been meaning to say this for a long time. It's so difficult to get you on your own. Oh, do mind. I'd only look I'm cooking. Tweeny, I, I know I was a complete ass when you first knew me. I, I suppose I'm no great shapes even now. Oh, Ernie. Well, there's, there's a perfect site for a bungalow down by Porcupine Creek. And I built it just the way you wanted it. And I'm jolly good at making furniture. And I do love you so very much, oh, Tweenie, darling. I've forgotten this. Ernie, are you asking me to walk out with you? Oh, Tweenie, if only you would. But what about Catherine? Um, Kathy's all right, but she's not in your class. Besides, Besides what? Well, she's got her eye on the gov. Oh, has she? Well, she can take it off again. I see. Oh, I'm sorry, Ernie. That's the way it is. Oh, that's all right. Has he said anything? Well, not yet. But he will. At least... Oh, don't keep on so. Hmm? Oh, get out! <laughs> A lady who Oh, well, I'm as good as you are. Here! What's all this? 
I'm breakfast orderly this morning. Well, you should have been there to cook it. Well, anyway, I'm serving it. Oh, Mary! Oh, come on. Um, I got you a bird for lunch. Wonderful. Well done, Mary. I was after a deer, but no luck. Gov? Yes? It's months since we've had a day out together. Why don't you come deer hunting with me sometime? Oh, might find myself chasing the wrong deer. <laughs> I don't think you would. I wonder. You know, Mary, you're a very pretty girl. Have you got any followers on the island? Huh, certainly not. I thought perhaps John or Ernest might be interested. Well, I'm not interested in them. Hmm. How's the boat building going down at the creek? I don't know. I haven't thought much about it. Now there's anybody else. I said to talk to them about that. Will you warn them? Mm -hmm. Did Ernest catch this fish? Yes, how did you know? I thought so. He's left a hook in again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. I want to talk to you for a while. Well, you probably know why I'm here. I've been looking at the progress report. Well, we're doing our best, Gav. I mean, with all our other duties. Now, John, I don't want any vague excuses. Well, are you suggesting we're slacking? I'm not suggesting it. I'm telling you, you are. Don't you believe you can build this boat? We've been on this island for two years. Two whole years today. Do you want to be here for three years? Four? Five? It's cut off from civilization? Living like a lot of savages? Is that all you want? What else should we want? You must want to get home. That's why I designed this boat. To get away from here. To get us all back to England, where we belong. Do you want to go back, Gov? Well, of course I do. Of course I do. It's my duty to get you back. And you're going. To work. On the terrace at Government House this evening, an anniversary dinner. May I have the pleasure of your company? Yes! Oysters will be served. Yes! And Mary, roast venison. Well done, John. You know something? Huh? The guard doesn't want to go either. I know. For two pins, he called the whole thing off. Well, then we could get on with life. That's it all. I want to get married and settle down. Oh, who to? Well, Tweeny, of course. I'm mad about her. Oh. Yes, but she's in love with the governor, old man. I know she is. Oh, you all are. No, we none of us can make any plans till he's made his choice. You're thinking of Agatha, of course. Well, no, no, actually, I wasn't, but... You mean you're after Tweeny, too? Well, I'm awfully sorry, old man, but... Well, she's such a glorious creature. Well, you two seem to forget that Tweeny's the only one of them that I can marry. Of course, if the governor chooses Mary. Well, you're a father. Couldn't you have a word with him? Sort of urge him on a bit? I? Would he interfere in the governor's private affairs? No, of course not. No, no. We'll just have to wait and hope for the best. from? Up there.
Mary, that's too high. You might have hit the bottom. Well, I didn't. Well, you're not to do it again. Is that an order? No. I'm just asking you not to, that's all. Is something the matter? Mary, I don't want to leave this island any more than you do. I know you don't. I'm so happy here. I've never been happier in my life. How long will it last? Why shouldn't it last? We're eight human beings. I'm very ordinary human beings at that. You're not ordinary, Gov. Oh, yes, I am. I know you call me the governor and leave me with all the decisions. Because you're best qualified to make them. But when it comes to something really big, I'm beaten. Because I'm afraid. You're afraid? But what of? That I lose you. Well, what do you say about that? If that's all you're afraid of, Gov, darling, let's stay. That was a long time ago. I don't want it to be hers. Well, don't you worry about Tweety. I'll look after her. Come on, let's get some more oysters. I just talk. I don't even know your name. It's Bill. Bill. Now, the way that sand gets under the governor's bed, I mightn't have scrubbed that floor all the week. Poor Daddy. You want any help? Here. Dear Daddy, you're not much help, really, but you're a nice, cheerful old thing to have around the place. Am I? Well, so long as I'm of some use. Daddy, that boat, don't you really want to finish it? Why should I? Well, well you've got so much back there. Making speeches in Parliament. Fine house, lovely clothes, plenty of money. Yes, I know. There are moments when... London. I do miss London once in a while. Walking down Piccadilly, strolling through Hyde Park. The barrel organ outside the pub. The lights along the embankment. Hampstead Heath on a bank holiday. Supper at Romano's. Champagne. There was a little ham and beef shop down the old Kent Road. I wonder what would happen if one day we saw a ship out there. The beacon still on the hilltop, waiting to be lit. Would you light it? Which just goes to show what a sensible couple we are. <laughs> I say, Tweeny. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not as young as I was. Three grown-up daughters. That's the trouble, really. You're the only woman on the island who, who, well, see what I mean? Oh, Daddy. Oh, I know about the governor. Well, if he chose one of the others, I'm only second best, I know, but well, I'd work hard and... Uh... Oh, please, Daddy. Thank you. You're so sweet and kind and everything, but... Uh... I know. It's all right. Old enough to know better. Where is everybody? Oh, the cub's back. Oh, I haven't pressed his trousers. Hello, cub. Here you are. Oysters. 
Enough for everyone. I'll get Daddy to open them. Got everything you want for the party? I think so, Doug. Good. Oh, Tweeny, a lot's happened in the past two years, hasn't it? Yes, it has. We've changed, all of us. We're quite different people. I suppose we are. Well, I take you, for example. You're as good as any of the others now. We're better than some. Am I? Oh, oh. Tweeny, I'm going to make an announcement at the party tonight about myself and Mary. I'm going to announce our engagement. You and Mary, engaged. Well, I'm jigged. You don't mind, Tweeny? Me? Why should I mind? Well, I don't know, but two years ago, I thought... Oh, that. I was just a silly kid then. That was... That was just hero worship, that's all that was. Oh, I see. Anyway, you are the governor. You had to have first pick, didn't you? And it's about time, too, I must say. Now we can all stop this fidgeting and, and get on. I'm sorry if I made things difficult for you. Oh, no, you haven't. Not for me. Besides, I don't like a fella drooling round me all day. Not that I couldn't have if I wanted. As a matter of fact, I've had two offers only today. Well, that's all right, then. Oh, yes, it is. Well, I can't stay here gossiping all day. I've, I've got work to do. On the island, she reigned as queen. <laughs> Turned up her nose and said, oh, no. I would be my little one for you. Oh, I thought one lover and one for two. Oh, what might happen when it's the way? If he comes out, so you better get a guy from the wooden knee. To you, Gov, and thank you for teaching us all the meaning of the word happiness. Oh. To your very good health, Governor. There. Yeah. Governor. Oh, Gov. Don't hurt, Gov. Gov. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, speech. Speech. No, I can't. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Come on, speech. Well, I can only say that if I have been the teacher, you as the pupils can all go to the top of the class. <laughs> <laughs> These past two years have been a wonderful experience for me. But if we're going to stay here, Judging from your efforts as boat builders, I strongly suspect that we are. Okay. Then we've got to make some pretty permanent plans for the future. Well, I'd like to start tonight with a little plan of my own. Daddy? Uh -huh. oh, that's no good. I can't be formal about this. Mary and I have decided we'd like to get married. May we have your consent and, I hope, your blessing. My dear Gov, may you? But of course, I'm deeply honored. It's only good, Gov. Thank you, thank you, Ernest. Oh, my God. <laughs> You've broken my heart, Gov, but I hope you'll be very happy. Can we be bridesmaids? I order you to be. John, you will marry us, I suppose. Oh, well, the greatest of pleasure, Gov. Uh, you have both, I take it, been residing in my parish the requisite period. Right, Tween. Come along, once again, all together. She's late, Gov. Bride's privilege, Ernie.
Where's Tweenie? She said not to wait for her. Well, then we'll start, shall we? Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's innocency. William, will thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her? I will. Mary, will thou have this man to thy wedded husband to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will thou obey him and serve him, love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, uh, keep thee only unto him so long as ye both shall live? I will. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? I do. Now repeat after me. I, William. I, William. Take thee, Mary. Take thee, Mary. To my wedded wife. To my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. A ship! A ship! A beacon! Don't light the beacon! Yes, light the beacon! Yes, go and light it! No, no! We don't want them! We don't want them now, do we? Mary, it may be our last chance. But we're happy here, all of us happy. Please, please let the ship go. It's all very well for you. England. To see England again. It'll be too late if we don't light it. Oh, for heaven's sake. Light the beacon. Yes, no, 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 wait, beacon. wait, everybody. There's only one person who can decide what to do. There's only one thing we can do. See the look on their faces. But it won't make any difference, will it? We can still get married. I promise it won't make any difference. You must go down to the beach, Mary. But go! Go along. How do you do, ma'am? How do you do? Well, you certainly seem to have made yourselves comfortable here. Oh, yes, we soon got things organized. <laughs> You'll be amazed when I show you, but first you must have a drink. Spice the main phrase, eh? By Joe, <laughs> this is a red... This is a uh, Crichton. My. Well, we are saved, Crichton. Did you hear that? In six weeks' time, we'll be back in England. What do you think of that? Congratulations, my lord. Well, would you care to see the, the kitchen?
celebrate our rescue somehow. Everyone expected it. If only your father could have lost his voice or something. Someone had to take charge, you know. But how courageous of you. So I, I set them all to work, and by nightfall we had food and water and, well, and a fire. Wonderful. All those people's lives in your hands. <laughs> Great responsibility. And you shouldered it. Oh, my dear Cynthia, who else could? My lord. Huh? You have no champagne. Oh, no. Your Grace. Thank you, Crichton. Tell me more about the time. There's a review of my book in every paper, Olga. And they're all splendid. They say it's the finest adventure story they've ever read. I'm a made man. Evening, Crichton. Good evening, sir. Come along, Catherine. I say, you don't think he'll read the book, do you? Fine, too, I should think. Oh, Lord. Oh, well, if you had to write it, you should have written the truth. Now, don't be silly, Olga. Anyway, he's got nearly a whole page to himself. Ernest. Congratulations. I read it last night. I couldn't put it down. Neither could I. The story of the tiger cat. Poor Lord Lowe, with only a bow and arrow. Oh, you saved his life, there's no doubt about that. With your bare hands, too. By Jove. Yes, with my bare hands, I tell you. Remarkable. Oh, young Woolly would have been a goner that day. That must have been a very harrowing experience. Excuse me, sir. Mary, remember where you are. I'm sorry, Father. I, I keep forgetting. Mary, Crichton will have to go. Oh, no. But it's like living on top of a volcano. Oh, but, Father, he, he, he won't say anything. Don't you see that if he did... You've read Ernest's book, haven't you? Well, if he did, we'd be the laughing stock of the whole country. We can trust him completely. I'm sure of it. You don't seem to realize the impossibility of my position. Oh, Father, have you forgotten so much already? He made us into real people. Whatever happens, we mustn't forget that. Uh, yes, yes, but... Well, I shan't. Now then, now then, that's no way to talk, Mary. If you marry Brocklehurst... He hasn't asked me yet. Oh, Mary. This is our dance. Oh, Crichton. Bring me a large whiskey and soda. Very good, my lord. And Crichton, <laughs> the island seems a long way away now. Indeed it does. Like a dream. Best forgotten, eh? I'll fetch your whiskey, my lord. Excuse me. I cannot wait a moment longer, Mother. I am consumed with passion. Rubbish. You should take more exercise. But you agreed I should propose tonight. I wonder what really happened on that island. Well, you, you read Woolley's book. <laughs> a figment of the imagination. And if he's lying, so I've no doubt at all the others, especially Mary. Yes, but Mother, why? My dear George, if I'd been shipwrecked on a desert island with two young men, I dare say I should have lied when I got home. Oh, really, Mother? I'm determined to find out the truth. I want everyone who was on that island assembled in the drawing room immediately, including Crichton. He won't dare to lie to me. But, Mother, you can't interrupt the George, ball. go and tell them. Oh, anyone begins to answer me with the fact is. But why, Mother? 
because that is usually the beginning of a lie. I object to being summoned from my own ballroom in this peremptory fashion. Don't bluster, my dear Henry. Now, Emily. Don't bluster. There are certain suspicions I wish to allay before the announcement of George's engagement. Ah, Crichton. My lady. You were one of the castaways, I believe. I was. Now, I want you to answer me truthfully. I promise to do that, my lady. <laughs> oh. Oh, a brilliant author. Oh, I... I don't know. Your book, Mr. Woolley, is as engrossing as a work of fiction. Oh, thanks. Well, the fact is... I... Lady Brocklehurst, nothing whatever happened on that island of which I am ashamed. No? Really, Emily, I must protest. My dear Henry, don't be alarmed. I only wish to discover whether the views you used to hold on equality were adopted on the island. Well, Crichton... Were you all equal on the island? No, my lady. I can safely say there was as little equality there as elsewhere. Were all the social distinctions preserved? As at home, my lady. The servants? They had to keep their place. How was that managed? You, Gail, tell me that. If you please, my lady, it was all the gov's doing. The gov? In the regrettable slang of the servants' hall, my lady, the master is usually referred to as the gov. Indeed. <laughs> and you did not take your meals with the family? Oh, most certainly not. I dined apart. And you, girl, did you dine with Crichton? Uh, uh, naturally, the staff sat down together. I see. Thank you, Crichton. Uh, thank you. That's all. One moment, Henry. Young people will be young people, even on an island, Crichton. I suppose there was a certain amount of... Uh, Shall we say, sentimentalizing going on? Yes, uh, my lady, ah, there was. Which gentleman? You, girl, tell me. Uh, if you please, your ladyship. The fact is, we, we didn't. It was him, your ladyship. Uh, Mr. Ernest. With which lady? Was it Lady Mary? No, your ladyship. Uh, it was. Oh, well, I don't care which of the others it was. Those servants' teas that used to take place here. Uh, they did not seem natural on the island, my lady, and were discontinued on the Gov's orders. An excellent proof that they should never have taken place at all. Well, I admit it frankly, and I abandoned them. As a result of our experience on the island, I'm thinking of going over to the Torres. Oh, congratulations, my lord. Well, I suppose that'll do. You're an excellent fellow, Crichton. And if, after Lady Mary and I are married, you ever wish to change your place, uh, you can come to us. No, I... Why not? Can you see why not, my man? I had not told you, my lord, but as soon as your lordship is suited, I wish to leave service. Well, I've said all I want to say. Let's go back to the ballroom. Ah, splendid. Call on, Captain. Dance, Mary, I think. Horrid of me, wasn't it, Henry? But if an old woman can't be disagreeable now and then, life would be unutterably tedious. Uh, you may go, Eliza. You're leaving to save the family, aren't you, Crichton? Well, there are too many Lady Brocklehursts in England. <laughs> what do you intend to do? And if I can help, you know, financially... Oh, no, or... no, no, thank you, my lord. I'm going to start up in business. Whilst on the island, I took the precaution of acquiring a certain amount of capital. <laughs> oh, Gavin. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I thought you had retired, my lady. I told Lord Brocklehurst he must wait for his answer. I'm sure you know best. Oh, Gob, I thought you were a fighter. On the island... On the island, I had tangible things to fight. Here, there's only civilization. No man can fight civilization and win. I'll fight with you. We'd end up by fighting each other. Let's go back, then. To the island? Yes. I can still hear the sound of the surf. See the curve of the bay. No, Mary. One can't recapture a dream. Don't spoil it by trying to. Bill! Bill! I won't let you go, I won't. Mary, you know I'm right. No, I don't. I love you. You love somebody you call the governor. He doesn't exist anymore. Now you're Lady Mary. And it's time you said goodnight to Crichton, your butler. No. Come along. I know. You've made me a cup of tea. Yes, Gov. You don't mind if I call you Gov? Just for tonight, anyway. Move up. Make room for me. Well, it's been a bit of an evening, eh, Eliza? <laughs> what about that lady Brocklehurst? Oh, 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 a determined woman. How about her on the island, eh? <laughs> Heaven forbid. You'd have handled her, though. Are you really going away, Gov, for good, I mean? Yes, I'm going. You're going to take me? Oh, I don't know, Tweeny. I just have to think about that. After all, you're in a good position now. A lady's maid. Your chances are good. And don't forget there was... Mary? I faced up to that. Besides, that was on the island. It's different here. But we do all right, you and me. We're made for each other. Think of it. The butler and the lady's maid. The happy combination. And what a chance for the children. <laughs> Go on, run along up to bed. Good night, Gov. God bless. Uh, good luck, Crichton. Let's hear from you. Indeed you will. Goodbye, my lord. Thank you. No, no. Thank you, Governor. Goodbye, John. Good luck with the new parish. Thank you. And God bless you, Gov. Ernest. Hi, Gov. I enjoyed your book. <laughs> Kathy. Bye, Gov. No more suffragettes? No, Gov. Agatha. Look, Gov. I'll come with you to the door. Uh, in a moment, my lord. I'm expecting a lady to join me. Huh? A lady I'm going to marry. What? I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I just want to wish you every happiness. Thank you, Mary, for my lovely clothes. Well done, girl. Bye. Congratulations. You're a jolly lucky man. What a surprise. Well, we'll just be off. Goodbye. Eliza, Goodbye. our train. Goodbye. Yes, go. Goodbye. Good luck, girl. After you, Eliza. Thank you. 